first of all, um, Premier League um, is now back in, in June. Um, what are you feeling about that? Excited to be back. I think um, we're very keen to, to get going and play again. We've missed football. Um, so from our side, yeah, very positive. Uh, we're hopeful to have a good end to the season. How does it affect your your job uh, and your planning now? You have a set date to to work against. Well, it's a really good thing for us to have a date to recommence the season. I think um, we can now plan the the three weeks we have left. Make sure our training is good. Make sure the players have the correct fitness work that they need to um, compete. the The real challenge we have is we have such a big amount of games in a very short period of time. So we're going to have to make sure our players are physically prepared for, for what lies ahead of them. What would you say will be the biggest challenge? Is it to get the players up to speed physically, mentally, tactically? Probably a combination of all of those things, I think. Physically is a, a big challenge um, because one, they have to be fit enough to play the games, but two, we need to make sure we don't pick up any injuries. And that, that balance is very difficult. So uh, we're going to have to do a lot of work on that side of the game. Tactically, I think we're pretty good. I think we know what's expected of us. Uh, mentally, yeah, there's going to be challenges there. I think the players are going to need to make sure that they're in the right frame of mind and ready to play. The few days uh, you, you've been with the players now, how how you notice that their attitude has changed uh, when now they can full contact training, they have a, a set date to work against and finally get to compete again? I've seen um, the group come back really, really well from the, the lockdown situation that we're in. The attitude of the training has been very, very good. Um, players look fit. They look motivated, very focused. So from our side, no problems. Um, I'm really pleased with how the training's gone so far. I suppose you've been uh, looking at um, some of the Bundesliga games um, that's been playing out. Uh, what, what have you learned from watching those games? Well, yeah, some interesting things to come out. You know, the home and away advantage, um, although it's only a small sample of games, but that's been an interesting trend. The away team getting some some very strong results. Um, the fact that there's no no crowd having impact on the game. Um, that's been interesting to see. The games have been slightly slower, I think, in terms of tempo and, and maybe leaning towards a more possession-based game because of um, maybe a more relaxed feeling at the stadium. So there's been a lot to take from those games and certainly, I think, things that we can uh, take notice of. Have you talked to the players about that? How do you prepare to all of a sudden start playing games in closed doors? It's a difficult one to, to talk too much about this to the players. I think they will, they will naturally know what's coming. I think uh, they've all played in empty stadiums before in their, their rise to the Premier League. So, um, but certainly from our side, it's something that we need to get adjusted to quite quickly because with only nine games left, you know, they're going to go very, very quickly and we need to maximise every single one. Have you started thinking about the way you communicate because all of a sudden, basically everything you say is going to, uh, we are be able to hear? Um, I haven't thought about it too much as yet, but I'm sure when the near it, it gets the kickoff, yes, I think um, I think making sure we communicate in a clear way, maybe with minus some swear words, um, that naturally creep in through the language of football. I think uh, we're going to need to make sure we're, we're, um, we're good with that side of things. It's nine tough games uh, coming up. You're starting with Crystal Palace. Um, do you think the way you play, I mean, the way you've been playing uh, all those years uh, when you had them, are going to be beneficial for you um, since there's no crowd? I mean, some teams maybe feed off the energy from the crowd and uh, winning some duels. Do you think that will be, be, be at your advantage now? Yeah, it'd be, yeah, it'd be difficult to, to predict too much, I think. Uh, we hope our style will help us because we've been very consistent with what we've delivered to the players over a long period of time. We hope that they know what's expected of them. Um, quite how the games will change in, in England it is difficult to, to predict and to guess, but I think there will be an impact in terms of, as I said, the feeling inside the stadium. We just need to make sure that it suits us. Um, definitely possession-based teams, I think, will hopefully... Uh, be helped uh, in this situation so hopefully that will benefit us 
We all know that uh, your goalkeeper Aaron Ramsdale tested positive for COVID-19. How has that affected him, you and, and the rest of the squad? I think initially, uh, definitely there was a, a feeling of anxiousness within the squad. I think they were concerned, first of all, for Aaron and his family and to make sure that he was OK. And I think once we found out that, that everything was OK with him and he was, had no symptoms and uh, he was fine, I think then the thoughts then go to um, as he passed it on to anyone else within the squad. So there was a feeling of anxiety. Um, but I think we're a few days later that begins to pass and hopefully now through the next series of testing, we're all clear and um, we can support Aaron back to full fitness and uh, yeah, try and try and make sure there's no positive tests in the future. What's the protocol for him now? Uh, seven days self-isolation. Um, I think once that seven days is done, I think, uh, and he has a negative test, I think he's okay to come back into the group. Okay. Um, there's been a lot of negativity uh, around this uh, what is um how it's going to pan out during this time is, has, has it been something positive that you learned that you had time to study or learn a different thing about yourself i think from my side um definitely there's been a lot of the learning taking place in terms of reviewing our training reviewing games um Uh, I like to think that uh, I use my time wisely to try and come back a better coach, a better person. Certainly spending a lot of time with my family has been hugely beneficial for me mentally. Uh, during a long season, you have limited time with them, but it's been really nice to you know, really get to know my sons in a, in a different way. Uh, spend some time with them. It's been uh, been really nice. Is it kind of starting over again? Because um, normally if you would play Crystal Palace I and mean, you would take a certain amount of form with you, players may be injured... Is that all off the table now, do you think? I think, yeah, the form that we ended the season with at that last moment, I think, is gone. I think we all start afresh. We have nine games. Uh, we're very, very keen to maximise every single one of those games. I don't think you can look back too far because a lot of players will have players that maybe were injured and returned to their squad. Um, so I think it's a different league now. You've been um, you you've been on, on the, the journey. That Bournemouth is uh, doing where you um, took them from Le League Two to Premier League, and there's been a lot of focus now on on the Premier League and financial situation. Uh, if you look at the football pyramid in England, um, uh, which is huge, uh, and some of the clubs are having a, a harsh reality prior to COVID-19, are are you worried about the, the football pyramid in England? Uh, what what kind of effect it can have? Certainly, it's not uh, ideal at the moment. A lot of clubs will be struggling from this um, this lockdown period that we've had with no supporters in stadiums for a long, long time. It's going to have a severe financial knock-on effect for many, many clubs. Certainly for our club, there will be a financial um, pain that we will have to go through. I've uh, got no doubt about that. And of course, with the uncertainty of what league we're going to be in, uh, it's a very difficult period for everybody from top to bottom, I believe. So certainly our football pyramid is something we have to protect at all costs because it's what's made English football totally the unique thing it is now. So uh, certainly I hope to see clubs helped if they're in financial trouble. What do you think? Um, worst scenario? I mean, have you thought about it? Mean, is there some championship clubs who you really don't know what's going to happen? League two, league one. Um, the, the effects of it? Have you some dare to think about that? Well... Yeah, not really. I think from my side, I just it's a hoping and praying that the no club uh, suffers that terrible situation that Berry did, where they went uh, out of business very recently. So um, I'm sure that there'll be people with the government or other institutions that are ready to help these clubs. Because we need to keep the the football pyramid alive. It's what's made, as I said, English football the uh, the for me the best uh, structured leagues in world football.